Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking a look at a really solid sub $300 PC and unlike most $300 or less PCs, we're not actually making all that many compromises especially when it comes to looking forward and to the future and looking for upgrades and that sort of thing. And the reason we're not making very many sacrifices comes down to the platform selection and this is a Ryzen system. So even though we're starting on first gen Ryzen, you actually have an upgrade path to modern Ryzen CPUs, things like the Ryzen 5 3600, which is gonna give you excellent gaming performance in 2020 and beyond. This PC actually has the ability to just have a drop-in upgrade. You can just put the CPU in the motherboard with a BIOS update and you're done. You don't have to get a new motherboard or new RAM or anything like that. So great computer for under $300. Let's take a look at this thing. Now you saw the thumbnail, most of the components for this build come from eBay. There are a couple of notable exceptions and I'm gonna link those down below because they did come from Amazon and there's a little bit of a rationale for them. First and foremost, the motherboard did come from Amazon, not eBay. It was one of those warehouse deals. So it was a great price. It was roughly the same cost as I could have gotten one from eBay. I just feel more comfortable with Amazon warehouse deals because frankly, Amazon's customer support is usually top notch. So getting a warehouse deal over an eBay deal just made sense to me. And uh, yeah, the motherboard came from Amazon. The other thing that came from Amazon was the computer case itself. And the reason I do that is because I know all the hardware comes with a brand new new case, plus the case is going to look nice versus buying a used case. Sometimes hardware is included to mount everything. Sometimes you got to kind of provide your own hardware. So that whole process can get a little bit messy when you're looking at the uh, used market versus the new market. New PC cases are going to look nice. They're going to include everything you need in the box. So that's why I went with a new PC case. It was like 30 some dollars. So it was it was definitely a lower end PC case, but it does get the job done. Now looking at the individual components of this build, we're gonna start with that motherboard. We are featuring an A320 motherboard. And I was basically looking for the cheapest possible motherboard because I actually was able to find the Ryzen 1200 paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at a really great cost of just over $70 paired together on eBay. So I basically knew off the bat that I only needed two RAM slots to actually get myself to that 16 gigabyte mark, which is why I went with an A320 motherboard. Most of them feature just those two DIMM slots instead of four DIMM slots. Though if you're building something similar yourself, I actually would recommend jumping up to a B450 motherboard, one preferably where you get four DIMM slots so you can start with eight gigabytes of RAM if you're on a tight budget and you always give yourself that upgrade path moving forward. But the motherboard was one of those areas that I knew I could cut a little bit of cost. Yes, I sacrifice overclocking, but eh. Not really a big deal. It's also worth noting that it's really difficult to find a deal that features 16 gigs of RAM and the CPU on a modern platform like Ryzen platforms. So understand my Ryzen 1200 deal was actually probably a little bit better than you're normally gonna find on eBay. That being said, if you can't find a great deal that pairs RAM, CPU together, or maybe CPU and a motherboard together, if you're basically getting everything together piecemeal, then you actually might be better served going ahead and just buying a new Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant, which I'll also also link down below because that's just about the best price performance you can find right now. The only reason I bought the 1200 was basically because it came with those 16 gigs of RAM which are already kind of expensive uh, by themselves so getting the RAM and the CPU at such a good price like yeah, solid deal. Jumping over now to storage, we have a one terabyte hard drive and a 128 gigabyte SSD. That's an M.2 drive. And these deals actually came with a bulk discount. So if you're buying used storage from eBay, you're likely not gonna find the storage at the same cost that I did. For example, those hard drives, I bought 10 one terabyte hard drives a while back for $100 on the nose. So we're talking about a $10 one terabyte hard drive that actually turned out to work really well. All 10 of them actually turned out to work really well. So I got a really nice bulk discount there and then I got the SSD as well with a five pack of SSDs for about $80 though it did come out later on. One of those SSDs actually ended up not working. It wasn't something I was overly bent out of shape about but it did drive up the individual per unit cost of the SSDs. You're more likely to find the M.2 SSD around that $20 mark used though which is where it would have been had I not bought multiples of them though after the one failed I ended up uh, 
still paying about $20 for the M.2 SSD. Storage though, a lot of people, especially on the hard drive front, will recommend that you buy brand new or at least refurbished hard drives. And to be honest, that's not bad advice. If you're looking to save some money though, you definitely can on eBay. Now the power supply is an OEM Dell Vostro, I believe 350 watt power supply with 300 watts available on the 12 volt rail. And it does come with a six pin PCIe connector, which is perfect because I used another bulk discount with the RX 470 cards that I've recently been getting. Uh, this particular one cost me right around $53 to get, I actually got two of them for $105 and change total. And later on, I went back and bought four more of these cards at an even better discount because frankly, it was a great value getting an RX 470, flashing it back to just the stock BIOS because it came with a mining BIOS on it and getting it back to the stock BIOS, it just operates great. It actually runs really cool because the 470s frankly are not all that hot of a card. And with that six pin PCIe connector, it works perfectly well with this Dell Vostro power supply. Supply. In fact, under complete and total load, we're only seeing something like 220-ish watts, and that's with the GPU and CPU hit at the same time. So we have plenty of wattage overhead, and I do tend to trust those OEM power supplies at least reasonably well. They, they usually are built fairly well coming from a big supplier like Dell, and that would make sense just because Dell can't afford to have power supplies blowing left and right with the cheapo power supply. So those power supplies tend to hold out fairly well. So once again, there's the chart in the sort of pie chart breakdown of how each uh, bit of money was spent on this system to get us to the grand total of something like $258. Though if you're going with a B450 motherboard and maybe not getting the bulk discounts, you're going to be a lot closer to that $300 mark. But with all that said, let's hop into those benchmarks. Starting off in Metro Exodus, and I sort of hit a few different APIs here just so you can kind of see how this card is going to perform in these different APIs that games tend to use. Metro Exodus, in this case, we're using the normal benchmarking preset on DirectX 12 at 1080p. We saw an average FPS at a very nice 55, and understand that at the normal preset, we do have some room to knock down those settings a little bit more to get that average up to that 60 mark in case you're looking for an average FPS of 60. However, that 1% low is down there at 31, which isn't nearly as good as we would like to see, so knocking down settings will likely give that a little bit of a bump as well. And this is where we start to see a little bit of CPU performance hurting us in that there are just a couple of stutters here and there resulting in a lower than what we'd really like to see 1% low. Moving over to Borderlands 3, and we're on the medium preset again, we're seeing DirectX 11 at 1080p. We see where the CPU is really starting to limit us a little bit. Four cores and four threads on modern AAA titles is not the most ideal scenario. That's why we're seeing that 0.1% low clear down there at 13. That being said, those stutters were very pronounced where they happened, but they were not necessarily common. So we did see a 1% low of 41, but that average FPS is still up there around 60. This is not an experience I would describe as the best I've ever seen. However, this is certainly a playable experience at that nearly 60 FPS average. Just know that you're likely gonna see some stutters here and there, especially when you're entering into new areas or when big explosions happen, there's a lot of uh, firefighting happening around the scene. You're gonna see a spike in that frame time occasionally. It's not necessarily all the time though. Oddly enough, Red Dead Redemption 2 on the balanced preset running the Vulcan API at 1080p actually gave us the most consistent experience even though it was most consistently the lower FPS. We saw an average of 41 FPS, but that 1% low and 0.1% low were right there around 30 FPS. So in this benchmark, I saw virtually no stuttering whatsoever. Everything was basically happening very smoothly and I can't complain whatsoever with the experience. Now, if you're somebody that absolutely requires 60 FPS to game, then sure, you do have a little bit of room to knock down that balanced preset and give yourself a little bit more performance. But it looks like, at least based on the benchmark, this game is gonna give you a very consistent experience, which is really great to see. So I suppose it is conclusion time and basically this system performs actually pretty well even in modern AAA titles with the thing being here it is a little bit CPU bound in some of these especially Borderlands 3 there seems to be a little bit more stutter with a 1200 versus the Ryzen 5 1600 paired with one of those RX 470s so if it were me building this system if this was my getting up and running system I would first look to upgrade that CPU either to that Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 5 
3600 if I had a little bit more money to spend on upgrades down the road. But as far as a starter system goes, it's great because it gives you that upgrade ability that a lot of times I like to look for in a system. But the whole point is that this platform actually gives you an upgrade path where a lot of starter PCs do not. Some of those older Dell Optiplexes, while they give you decent performance today, a couple years down the road, they're going to be harder to upgrade. This thing actually gives you that modularity that you look for in a custom built PC. But of course, I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this build? What would you have changed? And uh, possibly, how would you extract a little bit more value out of that used eBay market, especially in a time where it's probably not overly safe to be uh, meeting up with a whole lot of people outside of your online retailers. Maybe going the online route is probably the best option right now. But of course, if you like the video, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.